Amigos, hola Chile, pues aquí quería compartir con ustedes al, algo que es inédito, que es la imagen más famosa de la guerra de las Falklands. Seis Royal Marines cantando con la Union Jack, flameando con orgullo desde la antena de radio. Es... Sin embargo, aparte del abanderado, que su nombre es Pete Robinson, los otros marines nunca han sido identificados públicamente. Bueno, hasta ahora. Eh, se reunió a seis de ellos en Dartmoor, Devon, donde se reunieron nuevamente por primera vez en 40 años. También se reunieron a los héroes con el fotógrafo de comandos, Pete Olgate, quien tomó la foto icónica del 14 de junio del 82, el día que Argentina se rindió. Pete, ahora de 71 años, Creó su famosa foto de nombre Jumper, que llegó a simbolizar la increíble batalla de Gran Bretaña para recuperar las pequeñas islas del Atlántico Sur, a 8.000 millas del Reino Unido. Así que los dejo con esta increíble historia. Salud y yo. People who are not involved in war have no no inclination of you know what actually um, a soldier goes through and what uh, a soldier sees or a soldier actually files in his head. My name's Peter Holdgate. And I was a commando forces photographer in the South Atlantic. I had three jobs basically down there. One was my operational role, doing reconnaissance photography, looking after the civilian press. And uh, my third role was to record the war as best as I could in, and as widely as I could. I joined November 1974. So with the Falklands, I was 24 years old. Six years into being a um, Royal Marine. I'd had my 18th birthday just up at Old Car Rangers. A buzz came through and they said that the, the Falklands has been invaded. You're going to the Falklands. At precisely 10.15 this morning, HMS Invincible, flagship of this extraordinary fleet, slipped her moorings and eased gently into the calm waters of Portsmouth Harbour. I don't think there was any stage that any of us were really scared. You know, we were we were out there to do a job that we had been trained for. We just wanted to get on and do the job. We, we were just full of it, just full of it for a, a young 18-year-old going on a massive adventure. The UK at the time was, um, there were quite a lot of strikes going on, etc. When the Falklands came up, it certainly boosted the government, but it also put a highlight on the Royal Marines because we were going through defence cuts and there was talk that the Royal Marines during that time were going to be disbanded. That was one of the main reasons I had the brief I had to record the war on behalf of the three commander brigade because the, the Royal Marines at the time had been, we'd just lost 4-1 commando, they had been completely disbanded. They were looking at cutting back other commando units. Um, as a result of the Falklands conflict and the result, um, it ensured the longevity of the Royal Marines. It actually proved to um, the powers that be that they were hugely versatile. They can operate in any situation and 8,000 miles away from home. Believe it or not, 
This is the first time I've met those guys. As far as I was concerned, I just recorded the backs of their heads. To actually see these guys for the first time, it was quite emotional. Yeah, lean again. Uh, Nothing's, uh, nothing's changed. Boy. Navigation's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mate, it was great to see the guys. It's been 40 years, and we just cracked on like it was like 10 minutes ago that they walked out the door. Nice to see you. Not fit enough to do it again, mate. I haven't seen them since 1985. We, we follow each other, some of us follow each other on social media, but to see the guys face-to-face -face again after all this time is um, quite something, and I don't think it'll ever be repeated. <laughs> The photograph all came about. Um, we had taken two nights previously the Two Sisters feature. I won't go into the battle, but um, sort of the, the, the morning after, we found ourselves in this uh, like a quarry type feature. <laughs> Taff was navigating, so we were late. And we were held back there for a night and a day. We were going to go down to Wireless Ridge to give cover and fire with our missile system onto Stanley, um, just in case there was a final assault onto Stanley town itself. We, we just started getting a drink on. So I think we've been going about 36 hours. And then as we were making the brews, someone in the Infinite Wisdoms there saw themselves, this place might be DF'd. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. What's that mean? Defensive fire. They might have plotted it on the map so already could bomb it straight away. Oh, I and I think it was Roger Groom. They turned around and says, we better move. And we, we were all moaning, going, oh, no, we don't want to move. We don't want to... And luckily he held fast and he said, no, up. No. So we got up and we started to move across to the other peak and the last person was probably about 10, 20 metres out of that little quarry feature when there was a direct hit with a 155 shell. So for the sake of a cup of coffee in five minutes, we would have been direct hit and I wouldn't have been here and my friends wouldn't have been here. Just up, see it's high ground here. Just when it starts falling down the other side, you can see that there's a bit of a rutted track. And then we've got the fall of the ground either side, which pretty pretty much recreates the, uh, the terrain we were... Uh, the only thing that's missing, obviously, is the snow. We got the order to come down off Two Sisters and go along the track into, into Port Stanley. Uh, that, that was it. So we went down on the track and we're yomping in. The Marine in front of me, Willie Evans, had a Union flag in his pocket and he did initially try to put on his rifle barrel but without success. Yeah. Through there? Yeah, just not my fingers. <laughs> well, I can't get it through the second. Having trouble staying stiff, hey. Robbie? <laughs> God bless him. Hey. Hey. On the picture, you'll see some BVs at the front uh, and vehicles and that had engineers there. Uh, they, they were clearing mines. So as you were going along, you were just seeing these mines and when Willie took the flag out, the flag blew off. So he he ran off to get it. Uh, he ran off into a minefield to get to get this flag, which was sort of we were, we were all sort of waiting for him to get blown up 20 feet in the air. And I went bimbling off, chasing off after him, big, you know, come bimbling back. And then so major of four five came out there, give me a bloody idiot. Yeah, you know, it was quite colourful in how he said, "You're rather silly walking into a minefield, weren't you?" <laughs> because I had the radio antenna, we suggested that it be put on there. So it was stuck on with masking tape. All right, all face forward. It wasn't until possibly an hour or two later that Pete Holgate, the naval photographer, who was trailing me, um, the wind caught the flag, it unfurled, and he took the photograph, which became the iconic image of the Falklands conflict. The photograph sums up the camaraderie of the core. Um, what it doesn't tell you is your own personal experiences and what you could bottle up. People who are not involved in war um, have no, no inclination of you know, what actually um, a soldier goes through and what uh, a soldier sees or what a soldier actually files in his head. 
I'd taken the picture and just after I took it, the, it came back along the line as you know messages do, passed back along the line saying the white flags are, are being spotted flying over Stanley. For me, it was a bit of an anticlimax when the war finished initially because you'd had the euphoria, euphoria of battle, which is just a buzz you wouldn't believe. Um, the NCOs had us all keyed up, they really good, they had us all keyed up that we were going into Stanley and it was going to be street fighting, it was going to be, uh, we were going in for that big adrenaline rush again. So initially when the surrender came, it, it, for, for a lot of us, though some won't say it, it was, uh, it was a, a big anti-climax. You know, from the time of the landings all the way through till the surrender, we had adrenaline pumping through our, our bodies. So you're, on, you're effectively on a high. I mean, adrenaline's a hugely powerful drug. I myself, once the surrender had been signed, I just realized, I, sp I spoke to, to friends of mine, I said, I just feel really down. You know, we were told we were going home. We should be feeling elated that we were going home. I just felt really down. Um, and that's what it was. It was just uh, all of a sudden that adrenaline being switched off. To be the image of the of the Yompa, um, it gives me great pride. But the beauty of it, in my mind, is that it's the image taken from the rear of me. So it could be any Royal Marine, and it sums up all Royal Marines that actually took part in the conflict. The picture appears here, there, and everywhere, and, and has developed a life of its own. You know, even after I wired it back to UK from Canberra and Stanley, mm -hmm. by the time we got home, it had been used so extensively. Every year, that, that picture is the one that floods the media. And yeah, it's immense pride, not just for me and my colleagues, but for everyone who's down there, uh, including the Falkland Islanders.